How's it guys? So this is the simple demo. I'm going to explain from zero to 100 exactly how to use this program and what features it has that are important to understand. So to use the program, you need two phones or two tablets or a tablet and a phone, two devices both connected to internet. Uh, they don't have to be connected to the same internet. As long as they have internet access, they will work. So on your main device or your phone, I have a phone as my main control, and then I have a tablet for my um, screen. If I click Start Simulator on my phone and Join Simulator on my tablet, it asks me to put in a number. This number is given to me from my phone, so it knows which phone to listen to. Okay, so now on my phone, it is telling me that I'm online, and then it gives me a little code. So that code I'm going to put into the tablet, which is Q9M79, and I say join. There we go. I need it to select on my phone. So now what you're seeing is two of the same identical things. All right. So what's important to understand is that the phone, so the thing that controls the monitor, is the, the main one that you started the simulator with. And on this one, the thing that's different here is at the bottom in the middle, you can see it says vitals. So if I click vitals, it then gives me this whole panel in which I can then control the rhythm and the saturation and the um, BP and the ETCO2 and all these sorts of things. So what's important to understand here is that What's important to understand here is that to show anything on the screen, I have to update. So you see there's an update button. So if I change it to a sinus rhythm and I have normal saturation and I have a normal ETC2, I can hit update and it shows on the monitor. If I want to change anything, I can reduce saturation or I can increase heart rate or I can increase the blood pressure. And if I then hit update, it then updates it on the monitor. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, then there's obviously all these rhythms. Let me just bring this back to normal so it doesn't complain. So all these rhythms to choose from. So there's VF, VTAC, there's third degree heart blocks, all these things, ACES, all the things you want to do are all there. Then there's the, the saturation. Then there's the arterial BP, or if you have an A line, then you can have these. But if you hit normal on this and update, it's going to give you an A-line on the monitor and you probably don't have an A-line on the patient. You can't then remove it from it. So don't click on that normal and update. And in terms of the ETCO2, yeah, you can just control it like this. And it's important to see on the monitor that it starts on KPA, um, not millimeters of, of mercury. So that's always confusing. When it comes to the defibrillator, you can increase your joules here and you can charge and shock. So you can just drop the jewels just so it's quicker. So I can charge and then shock. Um, that's just how that works. And then if I want to on the um, on the phone, I can go to the defib rhythm. So I can set this to a normal sinus rhythm with a with a heart rate of 77. And then I can change this to a shock ball rhythm with ventricular fibrillation. Cool. I update that now you see on the monitor it's gone into VF and so if I charge and shock it'll go into a sinus shock and it's now shocked into a sinus so you can choose which rhythm you want it to go into and you can also choose the speed so that's one nice little function and obviously there's the sync button so you can sync and then you see all your markers at the top. So if you were in a VTAC, we can then say after the defib, we want to go to normal sinus. And so we're going to charge and we are synced. So we synced charge, defib dropped, and it's been there. We have performed a synchronized cardioversion, which has cardioverted it into a normal sinus. So that is how you would perform something like that. Then if you want to pace, there's all of your heart blocks here. So there we go, if we want to pace, we just go to pacer on the monitor. We hit pacer. Before that, we can also change our pacing threshold. 
So I can set my pacing threshold to 40. If I start the pacer and I can go up by 10. We all know how this works. And we go over over there. And there we go, you see? After every spike, we have a pacing. And then you can increase your current or increase your rate and whatever else you want to. And then you have it. So that is your pacing and your cardio version. So if I turn off pacing, it all goes back to normal. The other thing to mention that I haven't mentioned is that the ETCO2 can't go to zero. Um, so if you see there's ETCO2, if I drop it to zero, the lowest it can go to is one, um, which doesn't serve the purposes we always want it to serve. So if you turn it off, it then actually just like flat lines at the bottom. It doesn't say naught, but it is flat. So that may um, show what you're wanting to show. And in terms of the blood pressure, there's a bottom at the bottom left or here. So I hit blood pressure and then it runs the blood pressure and it will tell you in this little area here. Which is quite nice for the students to practice that. And then there we go. So if I, I can drop the blood pressure, I can drop the saturation, I can put them into a little bit better heart rate. And you can add um, ventricular ectopic beats here if you wanted to, six a minute or 16 a minute, or whatever the case is, to make it look different and got all these other options. So the only other thing I haven't shown you is that there is a set trends over time. So if I have a patient who they're going to RSI, I can have a, a kind of like a normal, you know, sort of, sort of vital signs. And then, so if I'm a patient that, that I'm going to RSI, I can have like normal um, vital signs like this. And before they push their paralytics, I can preset the heart rate to go up a bit and I can preset the saturation to drop a bit. And I can even have the ETCO2 change if I wanted it to. And so then I can then set that to 60 seconds. And then as soon as I hit the paralytics, you see how now the vital signs will slowly start to trend towards what I have set. So as you can see, the heart rate is going up slowly. The ETCO2 is slowly dropping. I see I didn't turn on the um, ETCO2. So now you see how it's going to slowly climb. And so you can have a slow change in trends, um, which is really cool because that kind of like re replicates something that's more than real. But then to go back off the whole trend thing, you have to turn off the trend to zero seconds if you want to update something quickly, you know? So if you want to, if the patient, I don't know, they take way too long to, um, if they take way too long to intubate, you can just put them straight into VF and then they're gonna have to deal with it. So yeah, that is, that is about the gist of what's happened. Um, the thing that I would want to say is that sometimes if your phone switches off or if you go out of the app and then you go back into the app, you might have to reconnect the two devices. Um, and yeah, at the bottom here, there's obviously you can set your alarms um, and you can mute your alarms, obviously. And if you want to not use the defib or the pacer, you can also get rid of that. So you can just see the monitor. And that is about that. So if there's any questions, feel free to drop a link or drop a question below. Thanks for your time.